I'd like to call the meeting of the Frontier Regional School Committee to order at 6 o'clock on September 12th. And I'd like to start with a thank you for the past five years for everybody's support. For me as chair, if you did forget, let me remind you. I'm the one with a big smile on my face because I am stepping down from chair. So we will have to fight it out. And I'm sure whoever replaces me will be wonderful because we're a really good team. So with that, I will turn it over to the superintendent who can open up um, nominations. nominations. Thank you. I'd like to call for nominations for chair, please. I'd like <laughs> to nominate everybody. There you go. Right. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, and and by, by way of motion, uh, have, a, have a paper ballot in just right away. Top three candidates have a one paper ballot runoff. Well, five minutes. Top three candidates I think that accept. We had, but we also had a nomination. Well, yeah. You know. I have second that nomination. Yeah, I mean, do we do we continue with nominations for vice chair? Yep. Oh, okay. He's in charge. Um, need nominations for vice chair? Nominate William Mayor Beeson. Second. Are you good with that? I would be good with that. Yes. Both nominations be closed. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we got a vote on. We did. It was unanimous. They closed. Okay. Now we can vote on the on the actual election. So, um, uh, all in favor for the bill, raise your hand. Thank you. Yeah, vote for himself. Thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for making note of that, Bob. Not <laughs> since since I uh, since I'm chair, I'm maybe looking for a new secretary in this. Dr. Carey would like to take it over unless somebody else wants it. Yeah, pay 700 bucks to anybody's interested. <laughs> you interested? What are you, sick? <laughs> so Dr. Carey is asking to, I'm retired. to take retired. it over? Is that what I'm hearing? I volunteered. Do you volunteer? Okay. Unless somebody else wants it. I second the nomination of uh, Dr. Carey. <laughs> Is that actually a nomination? I don't know. On it? I think you still need a secretary. I, and if in the unfortunate yeah. situation that I would be obviously. Would you like to be a backup secretary, Mr. Smith? Not that either. Okay. I'll be backup secretary. Keep trying. So, um, well, can I Because mean, I, yeah, I would. I mean, I could be backup secretary. I would volunteer to be as well okay. um, uh, backup secretary. I think, do we just need to accept Dr. Carey's uh, okay. and then. I, I think as a volunteer, do we need to even vote on it or not? We technically have to fill the position. Yes, yes, we need okay. a secretary. So, uh, but it's pretty hard to hold two elected offices. 
Uh, no, it's not. I nominate Phil Cantor as secretary. <laughs> 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 All in favor? Uh, are you, you willing to? Uh, sure. Okay. So Phil's going to be our backup secretary. Steve, you have to run the meeting, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Well, thank you. Yes, so he needs to be a backup to a backup. Good. I think it's great to have Phil as a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, they'll vote for himself. Yeah. Who else would you vote for, right? Yeah. <coughs> so the, the ballot. Uh, next uh -huh. thing is the budget subcommittee. Um, as far as I know, Bill, you've been on the budget subcommittee. Since Noah loaded the ark, yes. Can I appoint you as the budget subcommittee oh, sure. person? Yeah. Huh? Yep. Okay. Bill Smith. And the collaborative. Um, was lit before, still is. Would you like it, or would you like to pass it on to somebody else then? Um, I'm going to pass it off. I'm going to pass it back to Bob. Bob, would you like to do it? I'll take it. Bob will be our representative for the collaborative. Also, are you the representative to Mars? Yes. <laughs> I love the way you put that. <laughs> We always thought you were out in space, but I wasn't TV. quite sure. They never have a meeting, so you don't have to worry about it. And as far as find out about it afterwards. Um, how many of us have been on the policy review committee before, Representative? <coughs> I think Alan was on from there before. Well, I did, the policy, I did the policy, but I didn't know if there was anybody else other than myself from Frontier. That was on the policy. And just was it one from each town? Yeah, one from each town. Did Alan? Alan? Oh, that's a little bit. Lip. 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 That's not that. That's Lip. something else. That's our. Lip. You could. Does anybody want to be on the policy review committee? I would be on the policy review committee. Thank you. You will. It's going to be a. It's going to be a chore. Yeah. 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 We did a lot a few a couple of years ago, and yeah. all of a sudden, we're, some of the changes are going to be minor. And Dr. Perry will talk about that later. But um, the only other thing is, is it is really expiration committee. Um, He just appoints those. He, that's his. Okay. okay. Mary, would you like to be on the budget sure. subcommittee again? Yep. Yeah. Phil from Conway? Yes, sir. And since Keith is not here, we'll write Keith's name in. Sure. That's what you get for not showing up. You get a committee's so argument. Bob, would you like to be on the? Uh, I'll continue. Okay, Phil. Yeah. Judy. Myself. Where's the chair? Sorry. We have one more thing, maybe in the agenda later. But uh, who's ever going to the cake? Uh, we need a delegate. Yep. That's a good. Okay, we'll do that later. All right. Just want to make sure that we're going. Okay. Let's uh, review and approve the minutes from June 13th. Second that motion, please. All in favor? Okay, Patty, it's your turn.
Can I ask you one dumb question? No dumb question. No dumb question. How can somebody's salary be 32% out of whack in two months? Where I budgeted them, where are they getting charged? This is the, the data clerk I'm referring to on, mm -hmm. on the first page. That's why I have to look at each line individually. I have to go through this yeah. and then I find two okay. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just, no. 32 so just jumped up and bit me. So I, I, give the, I give payroll a list of accounts and names that I want them charged to, and then once they start rolling the first couple payrolls, then I take this report and I verify that where everybody is, and we make the corrections, and then we do the reclassification. Yeah. You can industrial arts, teachers the same way. It's minus 23% already. Instructional assistance, 20% in the hole. Which one? Instructional assistance. The instructional assistants are the other ones that we have to look at most closely because we budget them one way and then we have to wait until Mr. Modesto gives them their assignments. I get the assignments and then we start moving people around for the right buckets. Right. And just to emphasize that industrial arts has nothing to do with the position. It's not a new hire. It's a reclassification because they're going to be incorrectly classified. Right. 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 In the high school classes, there's been an increase in rolling industrial arts, so I'm shifting another teacher to pick up the middle school exploratory um, that was taught by him um, by Illinois. And so that's so it's you're just shifting over where one was down, picking up, and we're classifying it under where they're coming up. So it's not a new person. One more, and I'll stop annoying you. Football expenses, 72% over budget. Uh, five. If you only get five thousand, you can't spend eighty six hundred. It just doesn't work that way. So he, he also has an account during under student activities, and something might have gotten miscoded and not been paid out of the student activity account, and, and it should have been. So I will definitely. So I can I just say something, uh, Patty. Last year you did a really good job when there were aberrancies and things of kind of doing just a one pager of. And I'm of to do that. Yeah. So that that was a. Time. I'm sure. I just didn't have time for. I heard you say that you had a family emergency, yes. but I think that you know, that, that helped. Could I ask about on page two something that apparently wasn't budgeted for at all, but now shows a seventy-one thousand dollar charge? The salaries, team leaders. I just asked about the seventy-one thousand dollar one. Right. Does anybody else have questions for Patty? And thanks for asking about that. Well, that did help us a lot last year with yeah. that separate sheet. Yeah. Uh, do we have any public comment tonight? Why don't you stand up and come over here and. State your name, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Ed Moore. My student is Ed Moore Jr. Uh, the committee is prepared to action for requests and not comment. Um, unexpectedly, this August, uh, my daughter, who lives predominantly with her mother, relocated into Vermont, which means really she shouldn't be here, uh, except the committee can vote to approve her presence and generate a bill for me according to chapter 71 section 6a of mass laws i'm here to make that request once the pay tuition we have to vote for the state child i mean i can't talk about a student 
open meeting. So I can yeah. can you confirm that the student talk about is enrolled here. I don't know anything about the address that has been brought to my attention yet. So I can look into that. Um, we'll check we'll yeah. check into it, okay? Thank you. Do we have your number and phone number and name? Oh, Mr. Modesto, sir. Thank okay. You. I certainly do. Thank you. Anybody else out there for a public comment? Yeah. Uh, my name is James Maskey. I, uh, I have a question about the uh, use of school facilities. Uh, uh, specifically for the, uh, for the committee at this point. It says you're supposed to review these every five years. Is it a policy or is it a procedure? The school committee will every five years review and approve a fee schedule for the use of school facilities. This is amended 1999. We have not in the last five years. Not in the last five years. I, we did, I think. My second or third year, they talked about raising fees, and we it was tabled. I remember that talking. That was 09, maybe. I'm going off recollection now, right. but um, we so there's no. You, you so it has no, not been reduced. You have no way of knowing whether these actually cover the cost of the, the school in, in posting. Are you talking about like athletic fees and no, no. all rentals of the building? Yeah. Um, and you're the principal. Right. So I've tried to get in contact with you. Um, my other question is, my specific issue is with the church that's here on Sunday. Uh, is the, the rental agreement and this uh, uh, facility request, is that um, available to be reviewed by the public? Because I, I would like to have the rental agreement. We'd have to send that request to uh, the keeper of the record, which is for Frontier, is myself. Okay. Um, and when you you ask me for the paperwork, I will compute a cost uh, to get that to you. And when we receive your check for the records, then we can turn them over. Okay. I'll talk to you after to sure. your contact. I was told to, to contact the principal, so that's why. I emailed you sir. Yeah, I, okay. that's, that's fine. Sure. I knew this meeting was here, so I think you know. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, do we have a student advisory? We have not yet. Okay. Unfinished business. Uh, we're bringing up policy EEA student transportation. We have talked about this at our last meeting. It really doesn't impact the high school, middle school. However, I think. We are changing the policy. We're adding a statement in the policy that states uh, grade K-3 students will not be released from the bus unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver, we're adding, or sibling in grade 4 or higher with parent or guardian approval is present. So if the child in grades K-3 to three has an older sibling in grade 4, 5, or 6, if the parent agrees, then the parent or guardian or caregiver does not need to be at the bus to walk the child home or to the house or whatever. If they're under K-3, the bus drivers must make eye contact with an adult for the child unless the parent agrees that a child in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade can take the child into the house. And so um, clearly the high school, middle school students aren't on the bus with K-3 students or four, or five, or six. However, we would just like to have, present this to the committee and ask them to vote on it. The statement being, or sibling, in grade four or higher, with parent and guardian approval. Yeah, I mean, who, who's the arbiter of this thing? The bus driver? Anybody can walk up to the bus driver and go, yeah, I'm supposed to take care of no, no. X, Y, or Z. The child is on the bus. So um, Deerfield, 
Deerfield, um, the kids get on the bus, so can be, you know, first, second, third grade. Older sister is in fourth grade. Bus driver knows family, knows child, knows older sibling. Parent has sent in a note, a written note, to the principal asking this. Bus driver's aware. Bus driver, okay, following you soon. There you go. Um, they know the students. There's no strangers. They, they know the students in the family. I'm just not sure I've, um, that the Frontier Committee is equipped to vote on this without some input from the elementary committees, because like we you said... We, <laughs> vote, we voted on it we did. in June last year. Okay. To come back to us last night with a little <laughs> thing stating... What was the, the written? One? The written uh, part. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So we already voted on it, but we had a vote on the little written part, so... Okay, well, thank you for yeah. saying that. I didn't remember we uh, we voted on it. Essentially, before. what's happening is it's been a, in a practice, it's been a practice for many years that the parent sends a you know, John can get off the bus with Bobby, no problem, and we've been allowing it, but we haven't, it's not in our policy, and we want it specifically written in our policy that this is something that we do agree to, and the parents have to get permission, and that it's um, it's something that we do. We were doing it um, as a practice for many years. So these are only kids, kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. They can get off the bus with their older brother or sister. Did you and Bob have that type of relationship when you guys took the bus? Yeah. <laughs> so you Well, essentially, most of our buses do. Yeah. Oh, it works. I, I, had, I was coming down the stairs trying to get out to the bus when Zach was in elementary school. The bus took off and they kept him in it because yeah. they didn't see it. And it, down the road it went because I didn't get there and they did not drop him. And I, I give them credit for that. There's nobody there to take him, and they, they didn't well, drop him. They left him in the way. And uh, you have a second over here. You have a question? I don't. I was going to okay. second. But. Judy seconded? I did. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Update on the building declaration subcommittee meeting on August 22nd. Okay. okay. So, um, we've had some exciting moments, and we've been doing a lot of work. Bob uh, Lesko, the committee, uh, Bob Decker, Phil, the, uh, uh, him. and Back up. we've been having meetings. And so um, the update from the summer is uh, regarding the removal of the oil tank, Colcott was paid $4,200 to pull the tank. Um, LSP SWCA, some official company, completed the remediation of the contaminated soil for $6,900. And then Colcott was paid $5,000 to close up the remaining hole. So the approximate cost of the entire operation was $16,000. But now we're good to go in that case. Lynn, I attended the Atonaway Select Board meeting on August 9th. At the meeting, it was discussed and recommended uh, to us that due to the cross encumbrances on both properties, it would be more advantageous if Frontier Regional School District and the town of Waitley work together to market the two properties concurrently. So, for instance, uh, the encumbrance that we have on our building lot is the um, entrance, the right of way to the ball field and the parking lot. And the encumbrances that the town of Waitley has, or that, that the town of Waitley's piece of property that we have is the uh, septic system. So it would lead to reason that the uh, property would be much more attractive if we work together. And that's what the town of Waitley suggested. And um, I was uh, charged by this committee to find out uh, in June whether the town of Waitley a definitive answer of whether they want to uh, receive the building back and they do not want to assume, assume responsibility for Frontier Regional School District's property. But will work with us again in meeting our respect and marketing our respective properties. Uh, Phil Panter made a motion to recommend to the Frontier Regional School Committee that we go ahead and develop an RFP on our parcel in conjunction with the town of Waitley developing an RMP on their parcel concurrently to make the two parcels more marketable. 
uh, that was seconded by Bob Decker, approved by the committee, we would like to bring forward to this committee that um, whether or not they would like to approve um, us going forward and working concurrently with the town of Waitley on uh, marketing the complete parcel, lot one and lot two. There. They are interested in marketing recreational space? Uh, no. Um, so uh, th this, this motion is brought forward with the approval of uh, Brian, the town clerk, and Fred Orlowski, the selectman that was there. And the idea, we're not marketing the ball field. The idea is that this will make the property maybe marketable. Uh, as for residential development and that they could get two building lots if we work concurrently um, and if somebody has c c can do the uh, uh, disposal of the building uh, for an economical thing and those are lots of ifs two building lots would have to include all of their portion of the land correct and I'm surprised they're even interested because that they they're sinking money into turning that into a, into a ball field I'm surprised they're that at all, even interested at all in marketing. The ball field is an issue amongst uh, some members of the Waitley Town government, oh, which, is one, be, yes. which is one of the many reasons why uh, any positive outcome is still... Uh, a long ways away. Yeah, only possible at this point. Mm -hmm. So if we do this vote tonight, then we would have to approve the building lots for the building lots. Because yeah, Waitley has not. Oh, I get that. I got that. Yeah. Okay. So I think the motion we do that. All right, I got some discussion. I'll second it. The thing about it is, how long do we want to wait for Waitley to dispose of this building? Because they they want to have to uh, vote either the Board of Selectment or their, uh, who's ever in charge of disposing their property, and it's probably a town meeting. When are they going to take it to town meeting? And does this board want to wait for spring? Because I got some rumbling in the discussion that they would like to bring it to an annual town meeting before they decide what to do. And I just want to make sure that we're going to, we need to get rid of this building as soon as possible. And uh, you know, we've offered it to them, they don't want it. And uh, you know, I just think that we need to move forward. I don't want to be delayed for another nine months. I want to get it sold. And um, it's just no. the the I, the thinking was that it would be useful to test the waters to see if there's any interest out there, and that that's what this would do. Um, and that if there is any interest, it might help persuade some of the Waitley Town government holdovers or holdouts that are currently. Uh, predisposed to love that softball field enough to say no to whatever we might have in mind. So uh, there might not be any offers, but the thinking was that we're going to put do the PDF like ASAP, um, like right away, just to see if there's any interest with, without regard to Waitley making a decision that they're going to accept the offer. I mean, that's a separate decision that Waitley can then make, but this will at least let us know if there's any interest. And then we can go from there. Bob, since you know a lot about the D, is is the parking lots part of the school, or is the park one of the parking lots part of the? Parking lots are complicated by the fact that there's right away straw, and what I don't know that without having a full survey, I don't know uh, that they have a pro, full, complete survey done to actually delineate where the rights of way are, so that everybody understands it. I mean, I've got a copy of the original print, and it shows parking lots, but I don't have all the details as to the meets and the bounds and everything else. And, and, you know, we know that it's a big encumbrance on the back lot for the softball field is because of the septic system. And, what it, what it, you know, I think that I don't really want to have to spend money heating it and maintaining it and insuring it for another uh, eight, nine months. Uh, if we put an RFP out by ourselves, we'll get an offer, or we won't get an offer. And then the board can make a determination whether they want to buy and sell it or we don't want to sell it. Or wait to get step up and put their own proposal. And but they still have a right to purchase it for a dollar more than whatever we get for an offer. 
Well, you asked the question, right, as to where the, where yeah. the thing is. What we would just do is make reference to the, the description on record. We don't have to get to That's right. But I'm saying if somebody wants to know exactly where it is, you know, you need the full survey. Okay? And it may, you may already have most of it here, but the lawyer has to check all the meets and the bounds and whatever else. But you just make reference to the fact, to the need we have. And that should be sufficient. Uh, my understanding is it's the farther parking lot, the parking lot away from the building itself, that's to the left of the driveway, and the right away goes right into the, uh, the ball field. And the thinking is um, the idea is if they were, if someone were to buy that as a uh, residential lot or small business, whatever's allowed, according to Brian Domino, the town uh, administrator, um, it would be not something many people would be interested in if there was a ball field, uh, a right of way, an easement for a parking lot and a ball field on, on the property that they were on. Well, that's why we wanted to put both parcels together, but the way they didn't want to take a market the whole thing. No, they want to work. They, they plan to. We're hoping that they will work concurrently with us. If this school committee agrees that we can try to continue our efforts as a subcommittee to work with Waitley, we might have a better chance of solving the process. Uh, but Waitley does need to decide what they want to do with the softball field. I did hear it's possible we could move it um, to another venue, perhaps the elementary school. I don't know. So, but that's way we piece. Our piece is do we want to work with Waitley? Anybody else have any questions? I'm just hearing, so we're working with Waitley? If we, agree, if we agree working with Waitley and submitting an RFP? No, if are, are we, right now on the table, are we agreeing that if Waitley is willing or able, if they agree to work with us, do we have permission to work with them to sell okay. the lots concurrently? In other words, we're going to put out two concurrent proposals, one from the town of Waitley, one from the Frontier Regional School that's the way the board wants to go, okay? And if one, you get a proposal on one and not on the other, you know, you just have to deal with it. But uh, I want to move on, I don't want to. No, is that, that's not where I thought you were going with this when we started this conversation. I thought they were trying to work with us so we could put the whole thing out as a package. That's exactly right. correct. Yeah. He, well, he's, so he's wrong. Concurrent from he's, two concurrent no, they're not two, they can't be two. There's either, if they're going to do it all together, it's got to be one. Is it one or is it two? We're each, because they're separately owned, we're each issuing proposals concurrently. But they're single. I understand that. There are two pieces of property, but neither one of them is marketable without the other. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Forget it. It's not going to happen. You're going to buy something where you set the tank is on somebody else's property? <laughs> I don't think so, Tim. So you got to put... They've got to put, we've got to work with, with Waitley together because they've got to put the two pieces together to be able to sell them, but it's not going to work. I agree. Do we know how much it would cost to tear down that building? Yes. How much it would cost? Oh. Well, I, can, I can, let's go through that. Uh, Bob Lesko, thank you, uh, obtained an estimate uh, of between $58,000 and $7,000, $70,000 for the cost of the demolition of the building. And that is to remediate any. Um, Hazardous sources well, as well. Remediation of hazardous material might make a difference. And actually, what they do with the demolition material makes a huge difference. There's two ways to demolish that building. One is to grind a lot of it up and put it in the hole, and the other is to truck it all the way. And, you know, in talking to the demolition contractor, he said it's So, 
I, I would just like to say that's fantastic. I um, and I from the discussion with the uh, Waitley Town people, the thinking was that if the demolition could be under a hundred thousand dollars, that the it could be an economically feasible proposition for a developer. So. If that's the case, then we should all rejoice. We might actually be able to get rid of this thing. Um, so. $70,000. Of course, from here. Well, who we? The developer, I mean, that would be part of, that That would be a, what the developer would pay. They would buy the parcel and then do the destruction. The, pr the purchase price of the parcel would reflect the fact that, right, has to come but down. considering that we were, uh, predisposed to give it away for a dollar to the first person that walked in the door, um, I that would be a... Expense 70 grand and then try and sell it. No. 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 But if you do, if somebody wants as long as that's up front, that's a So... They don't necessarily have to tear it down either. And this, yeah. this information might help as well. I'll just add in this and then we can go back to the... Patty Kavanaugh has uh, procured a template of an RFP and has sent it to our attorneys who developed an RFP for our proposal, just ours. If the school committee agrees to move forward with the RFP, the plan is to share the preliminary RFP with the subcommittee next week, first for their preview, and then um, bring it forward. But if the school committee wants a copy, if everyone wants a copy, we can send it to you tomorrow. So there is an RFP out there, but it needs to be studied by the subcommittee to be sure but it's only for the frontier side. The permission we're asking for tonight and the motion on, on the table is would, would the school committee allow us to um, work concurrently with our single proposal, our single RFP, and wait, we, our, wait this RFP if we if There's a motion in a second. second. Mm -hmm. Any other any other any other discussions? All in favor? Good luck. <clears throat> Next is uh, leftover funds for the athletic light fund. Short term repairs to the track. New track. And who's got that? Actually, had a meeting with Bob Smith, Tony uh, Darius, Marty Sanderson, and Bob Lesko uh, to discuss specifics about the track. And I'd like them to talk about there are short-term repairs that can be done. However, um, there is some uh, long-term needs, and it's one of the folks who would want to invite the community. I can talk to you. Basically, you know, once we once we have the initial approval to spend about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in the light on it, put a two-inch overlay on the track, we try to contact contact the contractor to do that for the amount that we look at.
project that we want, and, and it was recommend, I got a recommendation for Clark Company, and they actually did the repairs to our athletic fields and drainage after they were originally built. Um, they did not have to do that. Um, and one of their people came out here and looked at it with me and basically said that he would help us out by doing some preliminary estimating together a budget for us about the need to make the project work. He also suggested that there may be a, a, a way to, to use a, uh, I lost my words here, but a public, you know, a, a, a process where we didn't have to get the project. It was a national consortium. Yes. And uh, so I'm waiting for more information on that, but the real issue is we if we have to pay somebody to design the new track, ten percent of a sixty thousand dollar project, six hundred thousand dollar project would be in the range of fifty or sixty thousand dollars. I don't think we're ready to ask for that yet, but I think and I really would like to proceed with a ten or fifteen thousand dollar project that Bob talked about with the uh, representative from Sir, um, one of the things for those of you that were on the committee when we built the school, um, Christoph Eldridge from Cape and Island um, Edison Track said that uh, the track was well constructed. He did not cheap out on it the way it was put together. One of the things that uh, he complimented us on was the fact that our track surface uh, is narrower than the subsurface. The subsurface is about two feet wider on all the way around the track on the straightaway and um, on the turns. Uh, so that was good planning. He says that uh, Christoph thought that the problems with our track have arisen from uh, wear and tear much more than uh, weather. Although there are cracks underneath that are probably caused by water and freezing and thawing just as any highway is. Um, I also spoke to main track attendants and both Maine and Cape and Island said that it was astounding that we got 20 years off the track. That it was an astounding thing uh, because it's basically not heard of. They also said that no track um, surfacer is going to guarantee work uh, on top of the surface that we have without doing exploration to find out what's going on underneath. So that your investment of, of a great deal of money um, would not receive a guarantee that it would last. Whereas if, uh, both companies said that if you went into a deeper project, then you're looking at a 20-year investment, which is what we had on the original. We did resurface it once seven years in. So that was about 05 or something like that. But we've gone a long, long time uh, without doing anything to the surface. So uh, you're inside the lane. Number one, everywhere you have a universal start and finish line, everywhere you have a starting line, there have been tens of thousands of starts from blocks in spikes on the 100 meter line, on the 110 meter line, on the universal start and finish line, 200. So that you've got to wear and tear. Our runways uh, basically, since our athletes are trained to do so, run in the same places all the time. So that you get each runway, the pole vault runway, the long and triple runway, you have got wear and tear um, that is just not from weather, but from use. Uh, so I thought that it was really positive. Darius was there. I thought it was a really positive thing because um, it was good to know I was on the building committee, and it's really good to know that we invested wisely and did a good job in designing it well. But we're at the point now where you have to, I think, make a decision about 20 years. Uh, and not some short term. Our, I didn't realize that our track was meant to be uh, permeable enough to allow water in and then to evaporate out. Uh, any sealing or putting another inch on or two inches would uh, create a sponge effect, he said, um, because it's, it's supposed to be able to breathe, it would, it would breathe and absorb less than in the past. Um, so that that would not be recommended and pretty soon you'd, you'd start to see bubbles. Your service. Um, so that's why he said that this is probably.
probably more involved project. And Vox contacted Clark. Clark are the people that came in and when the original drainage didn't work, they're the ones that ripped up the football field and put a crown in it and also redid all of the other surfaces to get it to drain out to um, the street drains the way it was originally designed to do. And you know, Clark thought that um, one of the things that was possible is that the surface got to be removed, the trap run surface got to be removed, and that they could scarify uh, as they do on 91. Uh, instead of tearing all of, all of the um, subsurface up, they would scarify it uh, and you know, reprocess that material and be, perhaps be able to do something to it now. But again, it's going to take an extra to see what's up. But I think that everyone agrees that you can't resurface what's there and that original surface has got to be pulled up and you know, something remediation is going to be done to the subsurface. But it was really good to hear that we did a good job. Of the chair. I think so. Uh, Bill? How much time would ten to fifteen thousand dollars give us to well in talking with with Christoph, I mean uh, well A it depends on what kinds of winters we're gonna have. So we have a black trap um, which has absorbed an awful lot of ultraviolet light over the years and that has a tendency he recommended that we uh, switch colors. Um, and I don't know if Bill, Mary, and others who were here remember, but the original uh, idea of having a red trap for our school was like a $30,000 add on. Modern technology makes it, uh, say, five, six thousand dollars to make it red. Something that most traps are red for, um, because they, they, they're better with uh, ultraviolet. Although the black is really good for us here in the north because melt snow quicker. As soon as a little piece of black starts to show, the rest of the track starts to melt. Um, you know, there are, but I, I think the idea of, of looking, there's also now a, a, an eco-friendly surface, uh, which is better for the, the application of uh, the workers who apply it. It's also better for the environment overall. So the technology, since we put it in in 1998, has advanced a great deal. So there are lots of exciting things. So ten to fifteen thousand would give us a couple of years, or okay. that's. And I would say, from being at the meetings, that that's that's limping it through that second year. You know, you're patching. You're patching the cracks, and then when you patch a crack, you're going to crack some each side of the patch, and then you know those kind of things. So that's you know basically we get two years out of that, and then we got to at the end of those two years, timeline wise for the school committee, we need to be going into the project at the end of those two years, of whatever we decide to do. The original application of that service, the, the track, the track arrived in two trailer trucks. It arrived in that. It was mixed on the site and applied much like they applied uh, the service of a highway. But at that time, applicators were only so wide. So there's a natural seam between, the lane, between lanes three and four on the turns and four and five on the straightaway. There's a natural seam, and that seam is beginning to show everything. And you're not going to be able to stop that migration. Covering it over, it's still going to migrate underneath the cover. So things like that. Um, we've addressed many of the cracks in that center line uh, over the years. We've done remediation on those. There are a few more that need to. There are some bare surfaces. And I think that especially the starting area with the 100 meter and the 110 meter especially where there are hurdles, um, needs to be uh, beefed up because it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty bad. And that's a safe, that's going to become a safety issue. And what will happen over the two years is that as the surface continues to deteriorate and the runways continue to deteriorate, um, officials will, they have the responsibility and the right to say that the particular venue is not usable. So that in the middle of the meeting, they can say that we can't run the long jump and the triple jump because the surface is unsafe, and then they'll only take four business points. That's just the way it goes in the track. So there are things that we really need to, to get on um, that will get us through to the point, hopefully, if you decide to make it a bigger project, they will get us to the point that we need. I should also say one other thing. We asked about a, you know, if there's any discount in doing it in the off-season, because 
their big season is from May through September, that's when those track application companies are the busiest. I think Cape and I, they were doing 20 projects. That's a lot. Um, and he said, no, there's no discount, but um, there's a premium that's attached to do it from that um, busy season, which means, exactly speaking, if you did it in October, yeah. November, um, September, October, November, you wouldn't pay that premium. So technically, there's a discount, but he did not call it. Bill? Patty, best guess estimate, time estimate for pulling off the bond, the bond issue for the larger picture here for all the other stuff that Mr. Lesko's got in his Easter basket over there? Well, that's next on the agenda to talk about, and I've updated the number to include um, the track going from 110000 to 600000 okay. so that's our next piece. Um, but I do want to say that um, reviewing the notes, I had left the meeting early last year. And we approved 135,000 available funds. There's only $85,764.65 in the line account. And, so then, and, we, and we knew we that. We didn't have that. Anyway. project, but we do have plenty we of money for that until mm -hmm. we get to the bonding. Yeah. Well, it's about Cape and I. That's probably because we have a good track coach. You're here. The 19 that we spent, or 16 or 18 on the oil tank, yeah, that came out of what we thought would be left over, I presume. That's why I'm, I'm still, I yeah. just got the coal cut though, so that's why I'm running without. I'm bills for 17 years, <coughs> still entering the office, which is not a good thing to be happening. And that, um, part of it, when we, when I looked at the projections back in June, I was assuming that we had paid all of our bills from January through May. And that wasn't the case. Uh, apparently with our move, once our forwarding address expired, we weren't getting our invoices. So I was looking at in, I was looking at information with a lot of unpaid bills because we don't have a purchase order system to encumber them. So we are really behind the eight ball and we and you can tell by the number of June warrants that I sent out to you how many June warrants we paid. So do we need a motion on spending up to out of the light fund for the repairs on the track? We're going to have a cap of 15000 16000 Is that what the vote's going to be for, the leftover funds to fix? Uh, the vote says to use the leftover funds in the athletic light fund to finance short-term repair repairs to the track and to hire a designer to provide specifications for a new track. But I don't know if we can do the second part until we talk about the bonding. We're going to spend $15,000 trying to fix it, make it safe, and hopefully our conscience will be there. So, is it? Oh, wait a minute now. Yeah. Second for discussion purposes. I, 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 you can't attach that second thing to that motion. And to hire a designer to provide the specs for a new track. No, 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 it's not. You've got to take that out of there. Yeah. But it's, that's what it says right here that we're voting on. You can't spend $15,000. Period. That's mm -hmm. it. Short term repairs to the track. Do we have to win that, though? No, that's what I his motion should read. 
motion to use the leftover funds of athletic field to finance short, short term repairs to the track. Period. Okay. Do you want to get it not to the C number? $15,000. Fifteen work? Does that sound good? Like, what, uh, if they Is that what you said, Mr. Decker? Not to exceed 20? Uh, that's second. 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 That's what right. yeah. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, okay. Summer to fun phase two. Under <laughs> new business uh, discussion items, summer building maintenance update. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Update on proposed bond request improvements, maintenance, the frontier window buildings and fields. Thank you for Patty. Sorry. So I gave you a sheet, uh, several pages, um, legal landscape. Um, and I started with the information that was requested last June when we were at the $2.9 million. And Mrs. Raymond had asked for uh, a 10 and 15 year scenario versus just a 20 year. Um, so I provided that. So since doing that, the track conversation came up and the track was we had on the project list at 110 and we needed to bring it up to what we now are thinking is 600,000. That starts on page 8 of 14 is the new project list with the new amounts. So if we were to add the track in, if you look on page 9 of 14, that would bring our total project to 3,434,340. The banker is telling us, take out your five years and find that in your budget. Take out the 20250 and that would leave us the amount to finance um, less the five year average of $3,414,090. Now, when I asked her to do these scenarios with us, um, we had a very interesting conversation about the life of the assets because, oh, I'm sorry. Um, now the majority, uh, a big part of this is now the track. That was the track in the last 20 years, it's gonna do 30 years. We're limited to the town's limit, which is 30 years. But what they are seeing coming down the line from DOR and bond council is that even though there is a 30 year limit, they're only letting you finance up to the true life of the asset. So rules they used to bond over 30 years, where you only get a 20 year warranty, you're only going to get a 20 year loan. That's all DOR bond council, council is going to do. So we looked at this as a 10, a 15, and a 20 year scenario. And on the 10 and 15, we looked at it two ways. One, where we would borrow, just do the band, the bond anticipation notes for two years, and then do eight years of financing, or we do the two years and then 10 years. So that there are two scenarios for the 10 and 15 and one scenario for the 20 year borrow. And the effect that each of these amounts would have on each town for each year of borrow. Is that is what we're looking for. Oh. I'm sorry. The, the schedules that you provided in pages nine through 14, the, I don't see the 20 year option. Okay, the Stop. option it's is going to be on page 14 of 14. 2 plus 18 makes 20. A ban is a bond anticipation note. Um, so it would be two years of ban and 18 years of permanent bond. And when we look at the 20 year, um, when we look at the 20 year uh, financing options, the 10 year assets are only financed for 10 years. The 15-year assets are only financed for 15 years, and only the 20-year assets are financed for the 20 years. Now, the question when we were reviewing this, um, and I believe, again, it was um, the wisdom of Mrs. Brennan, asked us, 
if we were to do this for 20 years, are we going to be in the same spot in 20 years? And the answer is yes, if we do not fix our regional agreement. We will be in the same spot again in 20 years. So my recommendation to this committee is that we set a deadline for voting on this so that if we're going forward with this, we'll get to the we'll, we'll be done and be telling the towns in January town <coughs> annual town meeting we're going to be borrowing looking to have you approve borrowing. And if they don't do it this year, then we've got next year and with the track because we've got a two year life. So I think that we should really look at setting a deadline and I would really recommend that at the same time we reopen the regional agreement amended for capital improvements and while we're at it, OPEP didn't exist then either and now it does. And maybe by doing both of these things consecutively, we'll be in a better spot in 20 years, 10, 15, 20 years. You brought all that about it. Small but mighty, yeah. Well, Bob, we also need additional guidance about we need to straighten out some other issues that deal with our agreement that aren't really aren't gelling the way they should. One deals with uh, school uh, charter school and uh, and what have you who pays for those children that aren't included in our October one enrollment figures right now. Everybody's paying, but it's not being charged to the respective towns of where those students are going. In other words, Frontier is paying the, for it. The whole of Frontier is paying where you've got a disproportional number of kids or students leaving and going to charter school from some of the smaller towns. It's disproportionate how the costs are being allocated. So that needs to be very down. And there's a couple other things that I'll discuss with you. you know, different setting but you know I'm just saying we need to look at the whole agreement and not just the two issues that Patty mentioned although well, they're both very much on point I just want to make sure when we go I want to make sure we, we get the whole thing in and not have to go back in another bite uh, and the other thing is the board it's in the wisdom and Billy can correct me if I'm wrong the board can decide to vote to incur the debt to do that today. and if we do our strategies right dealing with the, the finance committees and the selectmen of the four towns uh, they can allow it to happen without bringing it to vote yes that's correct and that's uh, true. which is nice to get them on board and and let them buy into it before we end up having you know it all go to hell which is for mm -hmm. Billy? and uh, just adding on to that i think that we need to be careful this is important and, and all those other things that Patty's talking about and what you're talking about in terms of changes in the regional agreement are important. But I guarantee you, if we try to do all of that at once, three quarters of that crowd is going to be asleep within five minutes, and the other quarter, their eyes are going to glass over like, what the hell is going on? And I don't want to poison this with all the other stuff that goes with it, so we need to be careful. Tom Meany can only digest so many things at once, and people just like, you're done. But I want to, want to make sure this one isn't the last one, and all the people who are there to help us have gone home because they're, they don't want to listen to anymore. So we need to be careful how many things we we pile on there. And what, what you're saying is right on point. If we could get the selectmen on board ahead of time, and we well, we can vote to incur debt right now. You could do it today if you wanted to. we got to get it on each other. Yeah, but all I'm saying is that, that they have 60 days, I think, to, to uh, call a meeting, or they can let our approval, our uh, incurrence of debt stand. It's up to them. So, but I wouldn't don't spring that on them. Don't spend them. Because then you're going to have four meetings. So you're absolutely right. You, you better you gotta take talk, it slowly. You've got to talk to them, try to make it their idea, as well as ours. And that's not easy. But I think they can see the cost benefit in trying to do it and do it right. Yep. We just have to sell it right. Okay. Not, don't need to shove it down the road. So um, I believe it's going to be really difficult to get said amendments passed at town meetings. I think uh, having a separate capital budget is a great dream for all of us, but uh, in essence, you were talking about asking voters at town meetings to give up some of their democracy. Right now, they have direct veto power over any spending that we have, 
and what you're talking about is a method that a capital fund could be obtained or built up without the direct say so uh, of the voter as to each expenditure and each item. And I think that people are going to. That's the selectman's choice, not ours. And that's a most. This, we're, when I speak to uh, my colleagues, we're the only one that has a silent agreement, a yeah. regional agreement as capital expenditure. And I think it's because. The people that put this together in the 50s really believed in democracy and really believed in the consent of the governed and wanted us to make good presentations well, and convince them. But the choice of whether to involve the town's people in the vote is the selectman's decision, not ours. All we can do as a board is incur the debt. And then the ball is in their court, you do what you want. You want to call a meeting? Call one. If you don't, in 60 days, the debt is legal. And away we go. You know, you got to realize that when the Frontier Regional School was created, it was one of the first regional school committees. It wasn't the first, but it was one of the early ones that was created. And these are some of the things that have developed over time. And you may not have had enough forethought as to the capital expenditures in life. But, you know, they did an excellent job of putting it together and solving a big problem way back there. And, you know, these are growing things and stuff. You know, the charter school and, the, and that stuff is all new in the 90s and it's never been addressed. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not an end around. We're not trying to do, run, do an end run here around democracy. <coughs> I disagree with that completely. So this has to get on the agenda for us to vote on. It's not on the agenda. So we have plenty of time to notify them that this is possibly what we're thinking. You will talk, talk with them first before you put <laughs> it on the agenda and yeah, right. because you, you can kiss it goodbye if you don't. Correct. Let's get them the volume. Oh, let's get their opinion. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they got a better way. How, how would you do one town at a I mean, each, go to each town, or would you bring them all together? Volume. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so last spring we attended the Deerfield Budget Committee, all right? There were the representatives from Deerfield attended, and, and and we heard a lot of feedback at that point. Uh, I don't know if, if this committee can set that, that we each go to each representative's, uh, the representatives from each town go to the bu budget uh, subcommittees and... Well, the, you remember what happened the last time we tried and didn't get them all together first. Everybody voted on something, every something different. different. Right. With that yeah. cap that capital menu right. we had a few Part years ago, Part Bob had two thirds of a truck right. and three quarters oh. of a right. staircase, and no it, tires. It, nothing. You know, I mean, nothing worked out well because we didn't have it all together and from the get go. I think we. Then a joint meeting makes sense. Yeah. Well, just just to throw something at you, Waitley's invited our school committee and Lynn and Patty Patty too on the 19th. They want to be on board way ahead of time. With with different things that okay. the elementary end of it, probably frontier end of it too. So we have a meeting on the nineteenth already with the finance board. Mm -hmm. They wanted how can we work closer to us? So that's a great example. Yeah. Of, I would yeah. I would think what we try to do is to get the representatives of the board like the finance committee here some night and set up some sort of informal discussion with as to what our goals are. Find out what their ideas are and how they best think we can go about solving these problems. And maybe we can get them to buy in to what we're doing, and so that we can go forward. Yep, I agree. I don't think it should be a surprise. I mean, the building's no. 20 years old. We were charged with taking care of it, That's which we've done a pretty do. good job of. But yeah. now we're at that 20-year mark. It's time. It's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got to rewall it every so. We have a yeah. joint meeting in October. Maybe we should set this up for like maybe some time in the both late October since we only have we have the one joint meeting and not five weeks separate meetings. So maybe trying to set up a time in like the last week or two of October might be a good time. To, like a special meeting? Yeah, I'd call a special joint meeting. Meeting the joint you're talking about with a selectman that Right. Not, all, the not, the, the not the union. The selectmen of the four towns and the, the Frontier School Committee, and if they wish to bring their capital, okay. capital planning. Not the union. He didn't want it being joint. Oh. Right. 
that's the, that's when you say joint meeting, I get the not the twenty seven and, 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 and no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm saying because we only have one meeting, one joint meeting in October, October mm -hmm. might be a good month for us to have a separate meeting of the uh, meet with the there's um, Tuesday, October 24th, and then Halloween is on Tuesday. No, we can't do it on Halloween. That could be fine. We come in costume? I'm going trick or treat. We do it. <laughs> I like my costume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so well, we know who you've come dressed in. No, you don't. <laughs> so Tuesday, October 24th. Does that sound good to everybody? Is that a night that um, the school people, uh, whatever the slip board normally meets? Uh, is it a Tuesday? Tuesday? Yeah. I think it's on Monday. First and third from week? Derek Guild's Wednesday. Used to be. But they they, they kind of. If it's the first and third of October, then um, October 3rd is the first and the second. Well, there five, there's five Tuesdays in October, so we got a Correct. better shot there. So the 25th might work? 6 o'clock? Thank you. Could we vote, could we vote alternative days as well, just in case we need them? Let's not. Ironically, we'll be giving a finance seminar to those going off to college in the auditorium that evening. <laughs> so unless right. anybody has a senior going off to college, it's the only conflict we have here. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's first, maybe there's that week. It's not here. This is a Wednesday. First on the week. Do you guys have any school teams? Okay, that's right. It's only if there's a, there's a conflict with someone who's going to the financial month to try to pull it up. I can, I can do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the 24th is good. It's the 26th you're talking about, right? I was talking about 24th or 25th. What time? 26th. Tuesday or Wednesday. 6 o'clock. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong night. Sorry. October 24th is a Tuesday and the 25th is a Wednesday. We're good. Dear Mr. Kilgates. Chairman, move for October 24th, direct administration to try to set up a meeting with representatives of the town select boards and finance committees to discuss this, the building issue. We will procure refreshments. <laughs> and it would be, you know, the well, that, 24th is appropriate. Bobby or pizza or something, you know? The 24th is appropriate because it is the United Nations. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. In, with Do I have a second? With, with, second. with, with second. you being the chair and of the meeting and, and us yeah. controlling the agenda. Yeah. You as in him. Yes, yes. Yes. I think yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, vacillating yeah, yeah. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All in favor on the 24th, 6 o'clock, raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Whole, I wouldn't come if you didn't whole, tell whole package yeah. information is the, these are the items that we're talking about. And, and we're, we're trying to figure out how to pay for them. I would invite, I would invite everyone. Uh, Meetings like the finance. Anyone? It wouldn't hurt to actually send each one of them a nice letter under the chairman's signature. We think it's that important. We want to make sure you understand. We do think it's that important. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. That was impressive. And at that point, as an organization, we should be good when we want to be. At that yeah. meeting, will we be discussing the 10, 20, uh, the 10, 15, or 20 year to put that as well? That's what we do. I would. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think to Phil's point, though, the meeting needs to be driven by the by the committee, um, but with options. Um, we'll have plenty of handouts. We'll have, just like this, I mean, uh, like the same thing, wouldn't you think? I would think so. Yeah. Even though all, everything we got, they should have. We'll try to get RCPs, maybe you know, to make sure there's at least somebody who have a packet like this. Oh, just making. Yeah. No, we don't want to cheap out on this one. Now, can I go to new business? Yes, sir. Summer building maintenance update. Principal Monesto. Or if Bob wants to do it. We have Principal Monesto down, but. That's all right. Um, 
They did a great job cleaning the place. What would they do fixing it? I think, you know, summers are busy time here for the custodians. They do all the heavy cleaning. And uh, of course, for the we do a little bit of miscellaneous paint. We do a lot of mowing and site maintenance. The new stair treads are lovely. The new stair treads are lovely coming upstairs. Even there, you know, we noticed them when we walked up. We have to worry about falling down. And that red color is great. The red, red, the red color on the stair treads is very nice. Well, the black would have melted snow better. But you've only got some of them. Came out real nice. Right? You know, we did a little bit of plumbing. We did a little bit of electrical. We did help out some of the other schools. And everything that we talked about, Bob and I were just whispering about it up here, the envelope and the windows and all that stuff, that's all rolled into the big guy down here underneath the pile of papers. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, you voted to do a, a tier, the library group media, we're yeah. moving on that. You gave us money for free cash to at least start the project. Okay. That project okay. hasn't, it's been a busy summer. I haven't spent a lot of time on that, but my goal is to try to get that bid early this fall and um, get the project even done late this fall for the first time. Because there was some sense of urgency to some of that, and I didn't think right. it was going to wait long enough for this whole bond thing to play out. So you did. You gave us money to start it, and there's money to finish it in the bond plan. I mean, I forgot. You know. 
Yeah, we're still plus plus once this gets just fixed. patching the leak. Nothing. Yeah. But when are you gonna when are you gonna be able to do the money that we had donated to us for the library? When will when that would that happen after when this gets fixed? The big picture. I was gonna combine it into um, right now. If we can do every, fix all the other things, and including the carpet in here, and then we can put it toward things okay. that aren't you know um, you know that make the space, etc. Gotcha. It's a it's a good chunk of money, but it's not in the scope of the bigger project. Forty thousand dollars is, is just one small component of the much bigger. Project. But we don't want to spend that until other. Things I didn't want to spend it and then at all until it's, you know got everything fixed. Right. Yeah. Uh, so my my recollection was that we had broke the large uh, project into steps, and we the, the school committee agreed step one and step two about twenty two thousand dollars to go in through the windows and stop the leak so that no more damage would occur and replace the seal on the windows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 25,000. 25,000. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Lesko or Darius? The place does look nice and nice and clean. It, it always does. So well, the stair treads are really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> they were. I mentioned them on the way to the stairs. Up to you. We've got we've got lots more of those to do. So. Thanks. Personnel update. Darius, is that you? Is it? Well, I had my principal's report, but I didn't have a personnel report. Um, but it was in yeah. the agenda. Okay. Yeah. It was oh, it's in there. Good. Let's see. Talk to it then. Not very much. Yeah, not very much. Was it? Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. Well, it right here. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Four. I just want to take that a minute. So. Basically, the four new hires for the school year. Placing um, some retirees and see who they are. They're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. All right. Um, MASC Mass Joint Conference, November 1st, November 4th. Be there or be square no. Who's going? You going, Robert? Yeah. I'm going. Bill's going? If you want to be the delegate, go ahead. I'll, I'll be the delegate if you're if you're not wanting to, but certainly yeah, I attended the meetings uh, the last couple of times. I, I'll volunteer to be our delegate. Move to appoint Mr. Mayor Peace as the, as the delegate. official delegate. All right. Is everybody else going to the you conference? Get you can appoint an alternate also. I don't know yet. But, all right. Yes. With Mr. Decker as alternate. Yeah, why don't we open it? He always goes. Yes. And Bob, you're signed up too? Yes. Okay. Do we have to vote on that? Yep. I'll get. We just did. Yeah. My child here and duties have been assigned. Decker and alternate. All in favor? Thank you. Next, something very important, review the food service report. And she's been sitting pa so patiently. patiently waiting over there through all this. She has a cool business. first name. Flurry, right? Flurry. Flurry. Well, still cool. <laughs> so I was in, we received the report at the end of July. I sent it all to you, the report of the food service. I sent that, they sent it to the whole 24 uh, school committee members. We talked uh, in the report that uh, the, uh, we hired uh, Patty was able to find an excellent uh, consultant that analyzed our whole food service uh, operation. And of course, we're losing money in all our schools, which is not uncommon. However, we are losing a lot of money in um, Frontier especially. Uh, so one of the recommendations that was in the several recommendations were made and we're following those but one of those was to hire an interim food service director to 
put the procedures and the policies in place that would uh, help us improve our lunch, uh, our lunch buying, our lunch, um, lunch yeah. our purchasing, our consistency, our uh, the claims that we file with the state, collecting money, accountability, point of sale, inc definitely increasing our sales and um, helping us stabilize our labor costs. So uh, with that, we, uh, we hired Flory Page to be our interim food service director, and she has been working very hard at uh, helping us stabilize. Uh, just this is our recommendation is that going for right now we have one we had one food service director that did three schools, and then we had. other administrators and, and in doing so we would be able to um, super, you know have better purchasing power um, and be able to distribute the cost more evenly uh, and there were a lot, a lot of benefits to it. better menu planning um, we've been getting not uh, from Desi on some of some issues both financial and programmatically uh, and expand and try to expand our program and do it together Instead of trying to try to do it in five separate silos. So um, this is something that we're probably looking to want you to vote in October when you're all together because as we as Dr. Gary said, we've only done Flory interim. We we cannot afford to keep her for a full year. Um, we need to get this up and running and, and part of the reason we have been at such a disadvantage, uh, Flory and I both, uh, is that Nothing's documented. There is not one document. Or Flory comes in my office and says, "What did you do with this?" And I'm like, "I don't know, but let's figure it out." And that's and it's been a lot of that. So we want processes that are documented. Um, we want better food. We want to serve better products to our children. And um, one of the things that I, I just want to talk to you a little bit about that we've never done here that the uh, food consultant uh, prior to Flory pointed out is that we're allowed do something called diversion. So if we get commodities from the federal government and they give us chicken breasts, we're allowed to divert that to Tyson and they'll make us better chicken nuggets than we can buy. We're allowed to take some of our ground beef and divert it and have meatballs made because maybe kids would eat spaghetti with meatballs more than they would eat spaghetti with meat sauce. And this is something that we've never, no one's ever taken the initiative in this district to do, is look at diverting our commodities to see if that we did it to have them converted into something that may be more palatable for the children. Because with children, they're very visual eaters. And we've got to, and, and, and we don't, we, we're not doing our share with presentation, um, and that's something Flory is working very hard with um, here at the high school, is the pre, especially with teenagers. Um, they want everything to look like a food court, um, and we've been doing that. They've got an offer now of a pizza every day, or three, three, different, three different types of pizza. Three different types of pizzas, or they can make a sandwich. Um, they, you know, they can have a turkey sandwich. Or we're trying to become Subway. We're trying to compete with the, where the kids are going, and I think it's it's beginning to work. We're seeing a little bit more traffic. Um, we're not doing a pancakes with a side of broccoli anymore. No more <laughs> pancakes and broccoli. No. So this is something that's really important in the Pancakes with the side of broccoli. It was yeah. honest to God. Oh, yeah. Downstairs. I, I found it on the menu. The real name will serve for Yeah. And Flory's also been working more with our local vendors yeah, to get stuff. our fresh produce in our schools. Um, so these, this is something that's very important, I think, for everyone to take into consideration that moving towards one director rather than five silos is, is probably the way we want to go. I don't know if there's anything you would like to add, Mrs. Page. Um, I would just say that we are really focusing on the quality of the program and to compete with the local other merchants here, like Primo is our major competitor to our pizza, and the kids are responding very nicely to the pizza. Um, as we're looking at the commodity list, as Patty mentioned, we certainly can divert the product, but we also can work the menu around the products that are available to us. And I think in the past, we 
stockpiled the freezer with lots of stuff that we could get, but with no plan on how to use it. So as I plan the October menu, we'll be looking at the items that are available on the September commodity list and work those into the menu or not take them and keep them in our freezer because there has been a lot of sort of stashing it away for a future date that seems not to roll around. So to plan to use what we get and use it efficiently and to plan for all the products. Also, I'm spending some time talking with the kids about the pizza. Today I went around and talked with the kids about the type of ice cream that we're able to offer through the John Starker A-list so that it's a product that will not be challenged when Desi comes in. But we think that the kids will be excited. They were very excited about having some input into which types of ice cream we're going to order for them. So can we divert our can we divert our chicken to uh, Polish Deli on Thayer Street and let them turn it into whatever they turned it into? Because I'll tell you what, that kind of stuff goes out of there by the bushel, and it's our juniors and seniors that are carrying it out at lunchtime. Do they make nuggets? Not you know, it's cutlets they're, probably. They're pieces of chicken with some kind of a breading they put. Honest to no, God. I don't know that we can do it. To oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't imagine the amount. He, I've caught him in there. He knows. He <laughs> knows what I'm summer. talking about. It was summer. <laughs> Go buy a piece of chicken and have it analyzed for chemical content to see what they put on it. Or just eat it. But the intention is to keep the customers here and to satisfy them and hear their feedback. So, so far, it seems to be working. The numbers are significantly up for the month of September. So, yeah, the countries buying it for themselves. They are. And the point of sale system now is available to teachers so they can put money down on their accounts. I don't know if they were able to do that in the past, but they can put money down on accounts so that they can come in and, and use their ID for the, the meals as the kids can do. Good. And the point of sale system has expanded into all of the elementary schools as well. That's something else that we've worked on getting up and running with the start of school. Um, I know you talked about the elementary last night with the credit card and stuff. It's tough for the four towns. Is it any different at Frontier? Can they use a credit card at Frontier? No, not, too? No, not yet. Not yet, okay. But it's easier for us to put that in place than <coughs> for a separate town. Right. Uh, and initially, um, we're going to, uh, Mr. Uh, Scott Hall, our technology director, has uh, been busy rolling out um, technology for all our new seventh and eighth graders. Um, but we are waiting on his calendar because we need what we need to do with that is compare because the the module that we get with the meals plus i think the product cost per transaction is high and i'm not sure that parents would want to pay it. so we could look for another vendor but if we look for another vendor that's cheaper then we lose the point where parents could look online and see what their kids ate so it's so scott and um, Lori and I and Dr. Carey and, and Darius need to sit down and figure out which way do we want to go with this. Do we want to take the risk that the parents will pay the premium price so that they can get enough close and personal view of what their kids are eating and when, or do we just think they want to make the payments at a cheaper cost and 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 look at the you know pick meals off the, the, the monthly menu? Do so you do one for grammar school, one for high school? Uh, yeah, uh, we we well I have to work with each town individually because we don't that's not our Oh, okay. So, yeah. people in high school? Yeah. 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 Y
it's the pleasure of your company. Uh, bless you, <laughs> bless you, and and I and I mean you no personal offense, but I have a hard time seeing how you can possibly be worth the money, and. Uh, <laughs> So, 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 I'm not going to be earning $125 an hour for 12 months or five days so, a week. This is a short-term arrangement for me to come in and make recommendations for you, and maybe we'll end up doing something like follow up with a day a month as it's implemented, or something along those lines. But it's to come in and really grab hold of the yeah, So I, I get what you're saying. And at this point, I'm also doing the job of the consumer director. And as Patty points out, there are no SOPs in place at all. There is nothing to direct the next person when they come in. So when we are able to hire someone, You'll know that you, you do this on Monday, or you do this once a month, or you follow this procedure to accomplish this task. But right now, there's been absolutely nothing, and Patty and I look at each other and shrug our shoulders. So that won't happen to the next person. So I, 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 I get. I my, my, my thing is that I don't see how the course of action you have selected in going the consultant route and then hiring somebody is reasonably calculated to achieve the objectives that you want, which is to have people buy more lunch and for it to cost less. That, that because you're, forste you're, you're forestalling the inevitable. We ultimately have to hire a food service director that has a budget and has to make the budget. But the, 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 the cushion, like, I imagine she. This wasn't budgeted for a consultant for food service. So, so what's what it's coming out of is the difference in salary that was assessed for the previous food versus what we anticipate hiring the replacement for. So that spread is what you're paying them. So look but, back but, a but but nobody ever did a budget for school lunch. There's right. been no budget. That's why we lose seventy-seven thousand because there's no budget to say you can't go over this amount. The person who was in the, the, our previous administrations in food service didn't do budgeting. And there hasn't, and there hasn't been oversight as far as going in. We're not just forestalling the inevitable hiring a person. We're preparing to have a person have success when they come on board. And figure we, out who we need. We don't know right. who we, I, we have. We have no idea who we need to hire. Flory's going to help us design a job description so we can go out See, and figure out who it is we need here. I don't, I don't know what, what success looks like, but I know it doesn't look like three kinds of frozen pizza five days a week for kids. That's, That's frozen. How, it's fresh. Uh, what kind of citizens are we turning out that just eat pizza and nothing but We're pizza? Not so. We're not just offering pizza. That's one option. Before and, they got one option, and, now they're getting three to four options. And, 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 and this whole thing is, this whole thing, what, what, what we've done, so our foods, this has already happened. The changes have already been made in our elementary schools. The food service directors have been told that their pay has been cut. Wait, 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 wait. Hours have been cut. Hours. Compensation has been cut. And that, um, that's already been done. So, and, and the idea, like, you're replacing, say, it, um, French toast made by hand, 300 pieces or whatever, with frozen no, French no, toast. No, it, no, it, it is frozen. Scratch. You're rehitting frozen I, stuff. I need, I need to speak to what you're talking about. The recommendations that my colleague Jim Holstead made in that proposal were using standard statistics for food service operation. And typically, a food service worker is able to produce between 15 and 22 meals per man hour. So for every hour that I work, I'm able to produce 15 or 22 man hours, 50 or 15 or 22 meals for my time. Here, most of your schools, including Frontier, were producing about six meals per man hour. So when we looked at our labor budget, the labor budget was very much out of whack with the cost of the food. And you were making the frozen products then, and now we are making the fresh products, and we have less staff. So we've made some very gentle cuts compared to the recommendation that Jim had made originally in the hope that the improved food quality and bringing in more customers would offset the cuts that we made in the staffing. The staffing cuts have been very gentle, much less than what was recommended in the proposal, and the food is now more fresh food, more food made from scratch on site. All right, that's not what the students that have spoken to me have said, but um, I'll take your, your word for it. The, the thing about all of this is that this money that's being spent on consultant 
had we just hired somebody before you got the consultant, if you just hired somebody, given them a budget, and then you would have had that money as a cushion for to, to enable the person to succeed and enable the person to do their own techniques. Most of the things in that in that five that report that we paid five thousand dollars for, most of the things in that report, um, their ideas, their techniques. What you're trying is ideas and techniques. The person in charge of the program whom we hire should have their own techniques and ideas. How will we and and, and them if we don't know what we're looking for. Yeah. Nobody here knows what a food service director is supposed to we, do. We need to set that person up to have success. And as you're saying, go hire somebody. I can't tell you the lion's den that I've been thrown into. Patty can speak to what's been happening. You have to have a very qualified person. I have an MBA and I'm a registered dietitian and I am really struggling with some of the things that are going on down there. You are not going to be able to afford to hire someone with my credentials and my experience. So I'm trying to pave the road and lay out the framework so when we get a person who can do the job, there'll be a <coughs> for them to follow. There'll be directions and there'll be some references that they can follow up on. We're trying to set them up for success. You can't just go grab somebody off the street and say, hey you, come on in and run our food service program. We've got a great program here. All you have to do is follow a resilient new healthy hunger for kids requirements, pass the DETSI inspections, and satisfy all the kids. And you'll be successful. I'm sorry, I don't think that's a practical approach. The long-term savings that you are realizing are, are being achieved by cutting the pay, the compensation, the hours, however you want to put it. The people that were making $17 an hour are now making $14 no, no, an hour. No one's, no one's wage has no. been cut. We have eliminated breaks that were not... Less hours, though. Less hours. We've trimmed hours very gently for the most part. And may and I say... That the report did say that compared to everyone around us, our, our, our rates were high, that we pay high compared to everyone else in, this, in the area. It's all relative to that. And no, no one's wages have been cut. Ours have been trimmed. And there were employees who were taking break time on the clock that they were not entitled to, and there was no supervision to realize that people were taking paid break time that they were not entitled to. That doesn't sound good. No. D d d your, that, who's, whose responsibility is that? Your food service director who has just left here. So now who does the food service director report to? In the past, probably no one, Phil. In the future? In the future? That's what we're trying to fix. So who does the food service director report to? Patty or the superintendent? Patty and then me. Patty is the direct. She does bus transportation. She does food service. So it's... But we, when I came on last year, it was uh, pretty much uh, status quo for 14 years. And Darius and I, Patty and I, spent a lot of time working with that person saying, we need this, we need to do this, how about this, what about ideas, all for naught. And so what we said was, we can't pay you for the summer because we needed to make cuts. So we said, we can't pay you for the summer. There's no food being served, there's no cooking going on, so we can't pay you. And that person decided that they were going to retire. And, uh, I get, and, and, and that person was not enforcing the policies that we're talking about that are now being enforced. So now people take the breaks that they're entitled to. They don't take breaks. So, so they one, one more. Um, and, and that is just this, you know, this came up every month last year, every, almost every month. And, and I was always, you know, this is a constant subject of, uh, at my dinner table. And, and I'm the one that brought up the term prison food to describe what was here. And I'm the one that talked about, uh, you know, the mystery meat, internet memes of the frontier students that I've seen. And, um, and, and that when, when I would bring these things up, my recollection is that the superintendent and the business manager would defend the taste of the food and defend the quality of the food. I never in, eat a, in, a bit of food. Uh, I have food allergies. I do not in, eat in, here. I would never try to defend or honor or anything else. I have no opinion and never have. And, and I said that the, we're working on it and that the people working in the kitchen are wonderful, wonderful, kind, hardworking people. And I and, think that your issue is being addressed by having an outside person come in and look for what changes need to be made. So I actually think that you stated the cause and they have responded to you. Well, yeah. Phil, you're not an interested party. Lynn, um, you're next. Hold on. Lynn. Go ahead, Lynn. At what point are we going to be hiring a full-time food service person? How long are you planning on being? As soon as we get a vote from the school committee, whether all five are going to be doing it together. 
And I'm assuming that in the course of hiring somebody, we're going to be looking at that person's ideas of what they want to do here, right? And so far, whether or not they take this lady's recommendations or not, these people that we interview will have their own ideas of how it should be run. And nothing right. is hard in stone, we've told all of the employees right. that we've told all the kids that, that food service changes and taste change and well, I, you need to be well, flexible. Well, then so I think the point is that part of the um, interview process will be for them to give us a sample menu. If they will need to present the sample menu for and us I so we can evaluate that was their part of his point that why you, what you are doing is really good for my, my kids who are here who like the improvements in the lunch. Um, whoever we hire are going to have their own ideas of what we should do. Absolutely. And I think that's what you were trying to get. Not that you are not valuable, but that the people going forward, the people that we hire are going to have their own ideas. Right? So we're going to have to choose what plan, not just what person, but what plan we want to have. With no we also question. are fairly strictly governed by the Public Health Act and our reliance on the federal reimbursement. So there is some structure that we have to follow, but certainly we want to hire someone who's going to come with all sorts of creative ideas and be able to brainstorm and interact with the kids. We want someone who's going to be creative. And I think that that's the problem that you were talking about, that the, the same old, same old kept happening and happening and happening, and that's not what the kids want. I'm sure all of you who have children at home know that that's not what they want these days, that you have to be constantly changing and responding to their tastes. And clearly the successful candidate will have lots of good ideas that they'll put forward that could be implemented. So and you were just I would filling in until we find a program that we want to well, go I would in person. It, I don't think we're looking for a program. I think we're looking for a person who can come up with some creative ideas. And right. I am assuming that I will be involved in this process to help evaluate whether an idea is going to be feasible or not in school feeding. It's more that we're going to set up some standard practices and procedures, which don't exist now. And then hopefully the person, when we interview them, will think that the standard practices and procedures that were put in place based on Flory's experience and Mr. Halstead's recommendations, that they're going to merge. And it's not so much like Mr. Smith was saying, don't serve pancakes on the side of broccoli. It's more that they understand how to operate a food service. We're building a foundation for them to specialize and refine, but there's no foundation right now to build on. So we're going to build a foundation, and then they can fine tune it and put the decorations on the on the surface. But we don't have anything to build on right now. There's nothing. So we're working on getting a base together that they can build on. Bob, I, I listened to the presentation. I think the hiring the consultant is, together with this one has been very positive in, in what's happening going forward. I have a couple of concerns going forward. Is if we're going to share the cost of the port the four of the towns, it's going to be based upon the number of the October 1 enrollments and the allocation of the cost. So the Frontier is not picking up the whole thing. In the past, I think Frontier paid uh, the former director's salary uh, and uh, someone picked up part of it, Whitney picked up part of it, but predominantly Frontier paid the whole thing. And uh, I think... And not based on anything. I know. That's my, that's my not point. Not based on any percentage. It was just yeah. random numbers. So I think we're going forward. Um, I hope that the game plan gets spelled out so everybody understands it and we get the kids to buy into the program as well as the faculty so we don't lose $70,000 a year because we can't afford it. We'll be paying, that, and, we'll be paying that in consultant fees in the first two months. No, we're not going to pay, pay that. I have that. Judy, you have a, you've been waiting patiently. I don't have anything new to add. Okay. So I'm not going to follow up on the What's the time frame? Well, you're going to vote October 5th, the 5th, Thursday the 5th. And what's the daily consultant fees that we're accruing? $125 an hour. Times how many hours every day? She's been working 10, 11 hours a day. 1000 bucks a day. And the belief is we can sustain this through October. I understand. 
Lori and I have been working 11 hour days trying to I, get the kitchen open. I know you have. And I, I'm. You have my, 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 my criticism is not at all an, an impugnation. It, just it's just, it, this is tactics and, and choices, and I don't. Uh, uh, this is this boggles my mind that we're spending this much. Get to October 5th. Phil, do you, have, you still have kids in the school? Oh, yeah. What are they saying about the food? Do they buy school lunch or do they bring their lunch? I, I, there's nothing positive that they have to say that she has to say about okay. the food. Nothing. Just. You have kids, right, Judy? Yeah. How anything positive from your end of the things? Uh, I have one that uh, brings her lunch every day, and I have one that I have been trying to sell because I've been showing them the menus that are shown in the school, showing them that they're different, suggesting they try it, like I'm making baby steps. I, okay. think, I, can, I think it will. I think it will work because right. there has been conversation about all about the physical changes and the presentation changes. Right. I just texted my son. Said, how's this how's the new school food he said not bad not bad at all i'm really sorry that i'm putting it in um he said it's much better and then capital letters no pancakes and broccoli three <laughs> 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 smiley faces so <laughs> you guys thought i was kidding you, didn't you mm -hmm. it's so funny i did find it on the menu i mean i think it's something that i mean I eat at Waitley at the end of the year in June. I would happen to spend a half a day at the school, and I had some of their school lunch, and I was very happy with what two people put together for probably 80 meals or whatever, and I thought it was very good. Homemade soup, you know, and I thought it was, I thought it was really good. Uh, if anybody gets a chance, you know, maybe we ought to go to the elementary schools if you haven't had, or come to Frontier and have a meal sometime. And, See for yourself if, if you know. Absolutely. I mean, we welcome your comments yeah. and suggestions, and that, that applies to the kids also. I try to be out in the dining room during the meal service and have them come up to me and talk to me about, have you thought about doing this, or I really liked that, and yeah. I think that interaction is valuable. I don't have all the answers. I have a great overview, and I can make suggestions, but we're very interested. You're going to be here, so you need to be satisfied with the program. Judy, you have a question? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cindy uh, has a question. Oh. I've been trying to send you a question. Oh. I raised my hand six times. You don't have any kids left in school. That's not, well, I have a husband who's a police chief that goes to Conway Grammar School every time we have turkey dinner. Oh, man. Good. He's lucky. They send him an invite, <laughs> and then he sits with the different kids, and it's a wonderful community situation. And I'm hoping that they don't lose their turkey dinners, because that would be really sad. So he may have been there a lot. But my questions are, um, I hope that we have kept the employees in line that we're talking finances here, but these are very hardworking people and they come in every day and then they find out they're gonna, through a letter, they're gonna be cut down their hours and that was traumatic when they know that they're working hard and I don't know about the end where they're taking illegal breaks and that type of stuff, but we do need to keep in mind that our cafeteria workers are not only really nice people, but they are very hardworking people. They, they that said, they are, they, are, they are part of our team, and we have worked hard to explain to them. Now, they did get a bombshell dropped in the last year. It's unfortunate that it happened the way that it did, but working very closely with them to explain what metrics we're looking at and why it's important. And I think that they do understand, and they are not just hardworking. They're pretty skilled. I've been very pleasantly surprised that they really want to cook and know how to cook and don't want to open boxes of frozen food. So we are working very hard to incorporate them as part of the team so that they understand the solution as well. And as you said, there was a bomb dropped on them. And as you know, if that happened to you, you would still have that little residual like now what's going to happen. So going forth, I think it's nice that they're being included in the, if not the choices, but at least the process. Because um, again, they are very skilled people. And I would like to know, we, we never really talked, and I, I read that thing when it came first, so it's been a couple weeks. Um, so we were like $77,000 in the red. Okay, so my question is, I'm not saying that that's um, all that people aren't paying, but I know people don't pay for their lunches. So how do we go about trying to collect those monies from people who don't actually pay? And do we have a number that you can assign to that? That's two issues. At Frontier, everybody pays. Nobody owes us money at Frontier. 
Right. Do we have a system of collecting that money? Yes, we do. Okay. And, 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 it, and we want to make it better. They have the online payment, so parents, so they don't have to send the money into the kids. They can do they can do online payments. So do I have to pay for last year if I didn't on the parent? Okay, yeah. And from here, we don't have that. We have that problem. If you don't have money, you don't need. Right. But now it's a five huh? school situation coming forward. You don't have money. So money. is it going to be? Is it going to be one menu? Is all five schools going to have the same food every day? Most likely they will have a very similar menu. And to go back and answer your original question, the principals have all received a balance due report, and the balance due report includes money that was due from last year, as well as current charges, and all of the principals are addressing that. In fact, when I talked about maybe having a little contest, we're going to collect the largest percentage of past due accounts. But so that they can send out a friendly reminder email update people and then maybe a letter and also to investigate whether or not it's a family that's having problems who is it paying and doesn't realize that they can call an application at any point during the year or something's changed so we're trying to really get our hands on it and stay on top of it weekly as opposed to halfway through the year or more yet at the end of the year well, by the way you owe us five hundred dollars or how you mentioned the case that it's significantly larger than that we want them to know that right now you owe thirty-five dollars and not wait until they owe us five hundred. But as of right now, it's not going to be a problem down the road. It's going to be if it's all five schools included. You don't embarrass the kid if it doesn't have any money. Then. This is not the kid's problem. This is the parent's problem. The kid has not being involved in this what, process. What do long. what do you do with? A child who comes to the line and gets his meal, and then he discovers that there's no money on his card. What happens to him? At, the, ele at the elementary level, the children are fed, and there's no mention of it. And then the principal follows up. With what happens here? They don't eat, right? Yeah. She just, no Patty no, just said, every, all no students are no money. Cheese sandwich. Patty, it's tasty, oh. incorrect. Um, I loan them money off my account. And Darius and I actually were talking about whether there's a clever way that we could incorporate it into our Meals Plus system so that it would go through as a charge against a, a general account. and. We're working with them to see if there's a possibility. It's more of a middle school issue now. because high school students will borrow from each other to buy yeah. lunch. So it's the middle school that I, you know, Lori and I have had a conversation that no student goes unfed. If they don't have money going through the line, if it's not me, Scott Dredge does the same thing. Uh, we put forward the money because um, our system doesn't allow us to go um, into the red. And so, you know, we have it that way. And that way it's also an accountability to a person rather than the system because they will rack up a debt until you call the parents and, and try to get that in. So um, anybody who does go over, if there's any, you know, we also walk the lunchroom to make sure everybody's eating. We inquire if they're not, if they, you know, if there's an issue, that kind of thing. And so this is middle school again. High school, you know, they're, they have a little bit more um, responsibility and freedom in that area. So. Thank you for doing that. That's elegant and generous and lovely. Right. Really nice. And it's not Thank the children's you. problem. Children should not be part of the discussion at all. I have a question. Yes. Are the tech schools uh, in Hoyle Community College, they have culinary programs. Are, are, are they getting involved in trying to train, train people to work in these cafeterias? No. no. Not at all. Uh, they train them separate. for restaurants. Right. Just, for, just for restaurants, but not training them to, to take care of the needs of these schools and, and that sort of thing? I think it's a great opportunity for culinary students, and I'm not familiar with programs right in this area. I've been doing a fair number of jobs in West Chester County in New York. That's where the company that we all worked for was based originally. And the culinary program at the tech school where I was working, I was working in a school last year where they had a tech school and a regular high school and several elementary schools. And the culinary program there was teaching the kids what they needed to do to produce food for the school lunch programs because it isn't just school lunch food, it's healthy food for everybody. And it's gonna apply across the board, whether they work in a restaurant or whether they work in a school cafeteria to understand how to reduce the sodium, how to reduce the sugar, how to provide more fresh, healthy food. It's something that they certainly were focusing on, including selling food back to the school lunch program in that particular district. Well, because the tech school, Grand County Tech, which all four of our towns belong to, uh, is a very good program. And they have outstanding culinary program. And Smith School has the same thing. And, uh, and uh, the Trinity College has a big culinary thing. And I think one of their focuses now is training some of the students to uh, work in the new casino with the food there. Sure. So, I mean, I just didn't know if there was something. And you might be able to get some co-ops from the, the tech schools who 
when they might get some credits of water. We do, however, have a shortage of substitutes. So if anyone's interested in substituting in the school lunch program, please contact Rhonda Lutheger in the main office. Starving for them, and our ladies are not taking advantage. We're talking about a woman who needs, her husband is having heart surgery, and she's told me the day she needs to have off. I need to have two or three people I can call to fill in that day. We have nobody. And at the elementary school, we know someone's going to be out. And I actually went over and worked the line myself that one of the days because I felt it would be a good experience to see what was going on, but there was no one to call. So we really are looking for, for support. Grand grandmothers would be a great fit in my opinion. But we could pay more and then we could get people. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. 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 Okay. Um, I don't have anything. Do we have anything from the collaborative? Uh, they don't meet until the end of the month. Okay, thank you. Uh, Darius, would you like to? And outside of all this, <laughs> the kids are going to class. Woohoo! They're being educated. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You sit here and we haven't really talked about education much. Um, let me just take a step back. We have a lot of great things moving forward right now. We had a great smooth start to the school year. Um, as you know, um, through um, stuff that I've seen out of your parents, if you don't have parents and you may not have seen it, that we have gone to a one-to-one -one Chromebook school for the high school. So um, we had reached a point where we made some decisions about during the summer months um, about buying new technology, and we were about, you know, let's say about 70% there to being one-to-one -one with Chromebooks, and going the last 30% um, just made sense. A lot of schools, I don't use the word a lot, many schools are, Use the word many. Um, schools are moving that direction. Um, Chromebooks are very inexpensive, they're about $200. They run off the um, Chrome platform, and it allows us to give each student the ability to anywhere there is a wireless access to be able to log on, be able to do work. Um, the middle school still has a one to one model, but they leave their Chromebooks at school. The, the transportation goes back and forth. Um, right now, they, they start each day, they, they pick them up, they go to all their classes, they, their last class, they drop them back off at the charging stations. So um, the rollout of this, you know, right now we are um, in fact at a faculty meeting today. We're going to be surveying the faculty about where we can improve on the uses of them and that kind of thing. Um, but um, you know, that's basically a wrap. And so if there's any, I know I wrote a very short amount there, but I assume there'll be questions on that. Um, but the, what's neat with it, before is, there, is the Go Guardian software that goes with it. And so basically, the Go Guardian software allows teachers to track where students are on their computers during the school day, and only during the school day. Um, and so if you have a class in front of you, you can have a list of where all the kids are at that moment. Mm -hmm. You also can lock their screens to say, let's say I'm teaching English and I have this great article I wanted to read. You can send it out to all their, all their computers in front of them, and only that can only read that during that time period. So it's a, it's a little bit more than just getting everybody a free-flowing internet device. Um, they also have their Chrome accounts and uh, their Google Gmail accounts, where they um, a Google Drive account so they can store all their stuff. They can leave their Chromebook at school. They can go home and use a computer at home or any other library device or any of that kind of thing. As long as they can have internet and log on to um, Google, they can access their stuff. And so the GoGuardian software um, is really um, a real good teaching school that's um, new this year. Middle school teachers are like, why didn't we have this last year? I apologize to them, but it is a great thing that we're rolling on. So teachers are being trained on that, actually, um, classes were actually taught today. So we're, we're catching up. It was get the materials out, the, the uh, Chromebooks out, and now we're getting in all the, the pieces there. So it's kind of a, as I explained to the kids, it's not a toy, it's a school device, it's the same as a textbook. We didn't give you something to go surf the web at home and have a good, you know, thing that school is tracking. Um, they can track where you go on the internet. I just, uh, the recorder piece that was done about that, I thought was maybe the best piece I've, I've read about Frontier that I could remember. And uh, you know, I, I know it impressed the editorial board that they had, a, there was an editorial a couple of days after that, and um, that, that kind of publicity is wonderful. So thank you. Um, so, I mean, we were very excited about it. It was a lot of work, and I got to um, compliment the IT department to roll out, to not having done it before, all the X's and O's of getting those rolled out and tracking them and um, doing that kind of thing. We are also offering an insurance policy this is where we kind of went back and forth. Some schools mandate an insurance policy um, um, that you know, if you're going to get a device, you have to, you have to sign up for the insurance. 
we did not, we have an optional insurance policy, it's $20, covers the device for the year for accidental damage to it and loss. And so it's a good thing. I, I, I didn't actually get that in place till last Thursday because we we're going back and forth with the insurance company, um, trying to get that as low as possible. So that's being put out there. Open house, we're also going to have a table to explain that to parents as well, um, that that option's out there. So I think it's, um, again, I, I think it's probably the most exciting thing that's educationally um, that's happening um, for all students this year. Questions on? I just want to compliment you on attracting more uh, school uh, choice children. Uh, right now, we have the numbers are correct. Approximately 25 percent of our students are school choice. Okay. Overall, our enrollment overall is up um, by I think 19 um, this year. It also has to do with, with we had a very small junior class, and we roll and senior class last year. So when we roll those out and we bring in bigger classes. Some of that has to do with that, so I'm not going to take a lot of credit. Um, there, I'll take it when I get to earn it. But there has been more school choice this year in the high school than we've had in previous years. Can we go to kids who want to gravitate to where they think the education is best? And, uh, you know, I just, you know, we couldn't run the programs at Frontier with, without that balance, without the money to come from the school choice children that fund some of this stuff that we have that other schools don't have. Delicate balance, it's working. I don't want to jinx it, but it's 25% my frontier matters. Right. Thank you. Another exciting thing I got to talk about, I know everybody's tired, so I'll talk fast and, and throw me out or listen in. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we've, I've been meeting with uh, Teresa Jones, who's a Southern resident and a, a professor at GCC. We've been improving our relationship with GCC and really talking about the transition of those students who are going on to community college. Um, and how we can improve. There was a concern that they say they're going to enroll and then they don't enroll. And so we're trying to improve that relationship. In that, those discussions, and also with Sarah Mitchell, we developed, um, GCC is going to teach its first class here on those early release Fridays for mm -hmm. sophomores, juniors, and seniors for college credit. And they're doing it for free. It's a business course, it's a business class that we don't offer here. Um, they just had an information session tonight. And um, there were about, I think, 12 parents went to the information session. I think we have in the low 20s kids signed up for it, um, and so they're going to be taking you know their first um, their first college class here, getting credits for college, not credits for Frontier. It's an outside of offering that we're offering here again, trying to get um, students to experience the college experience and also improves their resumes to college. It's all it's all good, as far as I can say. They do have to take the active placer and all that. So when they go on to junior college. Our community college later on, they don't have to do that again. And once they take the active place, they're, they're in good shape. So very exciting stuff. We're also planning um, for early release Fridays, we're also looking at putting in a lifeguard course and a CPR course and even adding more to that. So we're trying to do some of these, some of these extra things um, that students that we see the need for in the community um, during that. These are all things that are not taught by teachers because the teachers are in their professional development training. Um, another exciting thing is the English department had um, students read alive over the summer. And they are bringing, um, we are going to do a telecast discussion with one of the survivors that's talked about in the book. And wow. they're going to bring the kids in, you know, obviously pre prep questions and really have a, um, an online discussion, I'll say, but in the theater um, um, with this person. That's going to happen on the 29th. That's wow. great. Um, and then just release this day um, today, we, we, uh, the eighth grade is going to lead a um, community fundraising effort. Um, for Little Cypress, uh, Mercerville, I'm going to pass around the pictures of their school. Um, they are outside of Houston, kind of closer to um, Louisiana, and they were affected by um, Hurricane Harvey. And we have a connection to their school through Polly Wozniak, a teacher at her school, who, also, through her connection, we got a connection with the principal. And we saw with their school need, it's really, I think, where one school can relate to another. We're going to try to get supplies. And, um, funds and supplies to send to this particular school, which is a middle school. And if we can get it growing big enough, we'll even try to scoop in maybe the high school in that district. But you can see where that's their school underwater. Um, and so they can use just about anything. So that information, that's fresh off the press today. The teachers put it together today. They're releasing it to the students tomorrow. But so hopefully um, you'll see me pushing out stuff to the um, through email and that kind of thing. The last thing I have is handbooks. 
Okay, all handbooks and policies are online now. Okay, so um, these are the extra middle school handbooks, but I've always provided them in years past. So if you want one, I'll give you one at the end of the meeting. If you don't want one, you can always refer to our policy handbooks online, and these can go back to any new students we get in middle school. So if you want one, some people are, and some people actually like the agenda, so they want to write when they have school committee meetings inside. Yeah. Any equations in them? What's that? Do the, are the equations corrected in the back? I hope so, because I'm not doing that again. <laughs> and then I have some upcoming dates, um, you know, as you can see, coming ahead. Thank you. Thank any you questions? very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's late, and I will be brief. But thank you all for being and listening. Except for Bob. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, it's not on my list, but it is something I want to talk about. I have been meeting regularly with four town administrators, uh, Sutherland, Waitley, Deerfield, and Conway. And we have been... Um, we started meeting to discuss the draft of the, uh, there was a report on facilities use that was uh, recommended and voted on uh, at the cost of $12,000 for the district that was requested two years ago. And we still haven't gotten anything. Uh, the draft, we went through uh, blow by blow, we had about 60 recommendations. We met in June and we asked the uh, UMass person if they would see about maybe changes and do some face-to-face, real-time interviews and things like that, uh, getting primary sources for their thing, their reports, and using that, that information and other information for, you know, the report that we already have. Um, he said he would take care of it, came back uh, last week in August and didn't have any of those changes made at the meeting, but he did have a syllabus for a course that he was going to be teaching this fall that would incorporate everything that we had asked for. Uh, we talked, you know, different meetings with parents and interviews with select people and all these things. Uh, in discussion with the team, with the four town administrators, um, I, I, we decided that we talked about the lack of communication and the two-year span that we've been waiting for the project and the fact that uh, it was probably originally conceived uh, with the thought of moving from uh, Lady uh, Blue School to here that uh, and we've already gone ahead and done that in the meantime that perhaps we didn't at this point feel the need to invest $12,000 <coughs> in this project anymore. Uh, there were some changes done to the draft, and, um, but we decided that due to the fact that the people who initially asked for the draft, most of them um, are not, the town administrators, have all, they're all different, uh, and the uh, superintendents changed, and I think the needs have changed, the focus of the needs have changed. And so I would recommend to you, um, to the school committee, that we don't invest don't go forward and invest the twelve thousand dollars. And my understanding is, my sense is that perhaps the towns are going to invest their three thousand dollars in this report. It's uh, it, it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of lost its urgency. What happens to the money that was already assessed? We get the money back? We haven't paid. It's all second half. Well, you know. Did we understand what's going yeah. on? Okay. So was that report also including community buildings? That there was going to be an assessment of everything? And it, and mm -hmm. it came out of a conversation about um, low enrollment in elementary schools and the schools have lots of space and you know maybe some senior citizen services could be moved into a part of a school. And that that was the intent of it, to look at all the space and all the communities. The long range, it came out of the long range planning. That's right, yeah. And then we had tried to get a state grant, and then right when we were about to get the grant, the grant was 
grants with belly up uh, and so one of the towns recommended using you as <clears throat> and then right. this right. money has been in the I believe since like fiscal 14 or 15 it's been a while and the report was any you know was disappointing at best there was no innovation in it there were no new ideas But there was no innovation that I could see. And uh, again, it's, it's taken over two years yep. to. Is this, is this going to end gracefully? Who was the professor? You ask somebody to do a report, he does the report, you don't like what he told you, so you're not going to pay him? No, he it didn't. wasn't what we asked for. There was, it, wasn't, it wasn't responsive to our request and to our agreement. To be fair, there were no deadlines or timelines in the agreement. Mm. So Fatal flaw. There was a lack of communication in progress that was a concern for the towns. Um, the, but the, the, one of the focuses of the report, of course, was the new school, and um, that's no longer a priority. It's been over two years. Um, I'm surprised that they gave us anything without getting their money first. Well, it was a draft, and we're not using it. Um, so we've never gotten the money. No, it's not done. It's on a report that we asked for. Right, it's not done. Has he sent any invoice? Has he requested? He hasn't fulfilled what we asked. Um, and then when we said we sat together as, as a team and we went through blow by blow, saying the information is not here. This is you know, this is newspaper clippings. This is you know stuff that's public records. That's that information that we pay for. That we pay for, that we already have. But then you talked about he brought a syllabus going forward. So does he think he's still working on it? No. Through a, through coursework. No, he knows. That he knows. The, the, four, the four towns and myself um, are recommending we don't go forward. Okay. He, uh, the bottom line is he told us in 60 days that he would get, he would do uh, interviews with select people. He would do interviews with administrators in the schools. He would do this yeah. and that. And then, well, he couldn't do it because he didn't. Researchers or whatever, but now he's going to do it with this class, and uh, I just personally, I just felt that. Um, well, superintendently, I felt that twelve thousand dollars for this report at this time uh, really isn't. Office uh, Chairman, point of information: I believe the board selectmen of town of Deerfield voted not to pay their portion. But at this time, I'll withdraw my motion and ask that in substitute a different motion that we refer this to council for review. So we do it. Just call it. So we don't make any mistake and start a fire. So we'll pay the lawyer instead of paying the guy. He's on retainer. Maybe he can get us some money for pain and suffering. Can, it's, can we just have a conversation and see what the expectation is on this bill? Maybe it's a, I'm happy that this, happy to part ways. And, yeah, yeah. You know, you owe me $500 for copying fees. Make it, if you could make it go away, go see before you, know, you that, talk yeah, to the lawyer. Know, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fine. You may also feel that it, it was a Change failed thing. And even, I don't know. Sounds good. I second whatever was going on. Oh, I did. Well, he did. But it was very painful. So we all sat there and we were all basically telling him he needed to pull out of this and he just didn't get to them. We have a motion and a second to do something. Ask to do that. To rescind. Yes. All in favor?
our food service for our staff that are, uh, I couldn't resist that. Uh, we had breakfast, scrambled eggs, sausage, homemade corn muffins. No broccoli? Very positive, no, no. But very positive remarks. Uh, the administrative, administrative team and I met last week to discuss the possibility of piloting a blizzard bag program in our district for this school year. After reviewing documents and information from other districts who engaged in the program last year, we decided that we would take this school year to do more research and to develop a quality protocol that would meet the specific needs of our students. So we're not ready to move forward with the Blizzard Bag um, program yet. We decided that we would take more time to look into it and really um, button it up and uh, be able to inform everyone of what, you know, before we, we even ask if they're interested. There's so many questions, so we decided that we would wait and see how the other schools are doing. Put the unions on board when you have these discussions. No, and we wanted to move forward to, to actually survey all the teachers, oh, okay. all the parents, everybody, and uh, before. Yeah, before we would even do that. But we don't even want to make that because there's too many questions. We haven't really answered that. Yes. So we want to watch our neighbors in Orange, uh, Gateway, and uh, we did look at a lot of data from them. And uh, again, people, either they love it or they don't. So. I'll be more visible in the building this year. Uh, Darius and I have made plans to meet uh, and visit classrooms every two weeks. My goal is to eventually be in the schools every week. Uh, so that's that's been working out really well. Uh, again, my first year is to go slow, uh, learn the way to land, understand uh, the traditions and the values, and to make a vision and a strategic plan for moving forward, which I which we've done this um, this summer working with the admin team and um, we have a strategic plan with our vision to present to the joint school committees uh, on April 5th, 6 o'clock in front of I'm saying April, I'm not going to tell because it's for you, sorry, October 5th. So thank you very much. Bob? Mr. Chairman, I, before we adjourn, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Cindy for her outstanding Is this for is this for you? I guess just not here because she's the And now I'm sitting. Just a little closer. They didn't give you a baseball bat. No, I, I move that we get a plaque made for her. I move that we don't get a plaque. Do you want a little plaque? How many years have you been in the school committee? Not as many as well. Actually, no. No one's as been as much as them. How many years have you been in? Um, Over 10? Oh, yes. Yes, 13. I think it's time for you to go uh, to the conference and get a plaque there. Yeah. If you give me a plaque, it'll just warm for a little while. Uh oh, she'll put it in snow. <laughs> 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 but, uh, uh, move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. I have to say this, though. We gave them to Second. I'm not leaving. It's just. I'm doing a motion and a second to adjourn. All, All right. in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.